Okay, for this lecture, we're going to talk about the iron carbon system and we're going to look at the equilibrium microstru microstructures that emerge. We're going to look first at the eutectoid microstructure. Uh, we're going to then look at the hypo eutectoid microstructure. And finally, we're going to talk about the hyper eutectoid microstructure. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Throughout here, I'm not going to go through phase compositions and weight fractions. We've already talked about that. You can apply the same principles. We're just going to talk about the microstructures that emerge. Okay? Let's start with the eutectoid composition. So that's where the system composition is going to be the same as the eutectoid composition. In this case, 0.76 weight percent carbon. Okay? So what we have here is we want to take a we're going to begin in the gamma or austenite phase and we're going to cool through the eutectoid um, reaction uh, and then we're going to form uh, the eutectoid microstructure uh, below that. So let's call this first point that we're starting at, we'll call that point one, and then we'll call this next point that we end at below the eutectoid uh, temperature, uh, 727 degrees C, we'll call that point two. Now, point one should be easy. Uh, it's all gamma or all austenite, so we just need to draw a bunch of austenite grains. So I'm going to choose uh, green to, to uh, represent gamma for or austenite. So here we are. There's a bunch of gamma grains. Okay? Now, what happens when we go to the next microstructure, 2? Well, we know that when, the, when gamma... Um, transitions through the eutectoid transformation, gamma goes into an alpha and a cementite phase. What we know is that alpha has a lower carbon composition than, than the gamma phase, and the cementite has a higher carbon composition than the gamma phase. So what that means is that we have diffusion that's required, just like we had in the eutectic reaction. So we're actually going to end up with a similar microstructure it's a lamellar microstructure so that that diffusion can occur, and it's a lamellar microstructure of alpha and cementite. So let's go ahead and draw that. So here's the original grains of gamma, or close to them as I can draw. Okay, and I'm going to choose blue here to be my, um, my cementite. We have basically a lamellar structure where we have cementite lamellar uh, structures in an alpha matrix. Okay. So we would say that these are Fe3C and we would say that the, the remainder of it is just alpha. So that's that's our eutectoid microstructure. It has a name. It's called perlite. Okay? So that's something you should be aware of. Let me give you that definition more formally. So it's a eutectoid equilibrium microstructure that consists of alpha and cementite layers uh, or lamella. And this image I'm showing you on the right is just a micrograph of that. So you can see the cementite uh, lamella inside of a what looks like an alpha matrix. Okay? So that's the eutectoid composition. We're going to use that as we talk about uh, some of these other compositions that emerge. Now let's look at the hypo-eutectoid microstructures that emerge. So remember, hypo means less than. So we're talking about a microstructure with a composition that's less than the eutectoid composition, which was 0.76 weight percent carbon. So we're going to, uh, if, if we draw where that eutectoid region is, it sits something like there, right? That's 0 0.76 weight percent carbon. And anything then to the left is going to be a Hypo eutectic, sorry, hypo eutectoid uh, microstructure. So we're going to take an example where we'll we're, we'll take let's say a thousand degrees in the uh, some composition less than the eutectoid, and we'll cool it down to just below the eutectoid temperature of 727C. So let me give you a couple points that we're going to have that are of interest. We'll start with all in the gamma phase at at point one. 
we'll then look at what happens just below the this uh, phase boundary where where the alpha begins to form. We'll call that right here. Whoops. We'll call that point two. And then I'll label the others as we go down. We'll have one right before we go through the eutectoid uh, trans, uh, transformation temperature and then one after. But let's look at these microstructures first. Okay, so the first one, uh, it should be pretty easy. The first one is just like we had for the eutectoid composition. It's just all gamma. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we'll write gamma in here. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, what's going to happen at point two? Well, at point two, we know we start having uh, alpha begin to form. Uh, note that alpha has a lower uh, uh, a carbon composition than gamma, so then we're going to have to diffuse carbon away uh, from the gamma in order to form the alpha. So that we know that diffusion is going to be easiest along the grain boundaries, and so if we draw our microstructure again we'll have something like our our previous except now now we're going to have alpha particles or grains forming at the grain boundary as that diffusion happens um, and we still are are going to have gamma uh, that that is existing in the bulk of the material. Okay, so those are the first two uh, microstructures that we're going to see as we cool down. Now let's go ahead. Uh, let's move ahead to the next slide. Uh, again, we're we're on the same. Oops, let me draw my line. We're on the same trajectory down as we had before. But now I want to look at what happens right before we go through the eutectoid transformation. And then I want to look at what happens right after. So we'll call that point four. So point three, let's try to draw similarly what we had. Well, I had some grains that looked like this, right? Uh, those were the gamma grains initially from point one. But what's going to happen ultimately is that I now am going to, those, those grains or those boundaries rather are going to primarily become regions of alpha in the material. And this all exists before we even get to uh, the eutectoid temperature. So something like that, where those are, uh, there's alpha, okay? And then um, immediately before, we have gamma, something like that, okay? What happens to gamma now when we go through the eutectoid transformation in four? Well, we know that uh, uh, the Right, bef right, right before we cross that temperature boundary, the gamma is going to have the eutectoid composition. So the gamma that's remaining is going to form a eutectoid microstructure or the perlite that we talked about previously. So let's draw what that looks like. Um, let's see here. And let me... So there's my alpha that existed before, before the transformation. And now I'm going to have, I'm going to have cementite uh, uh, phase form in a lamellar structure, just like we had for the U eutectic reaction. The reason we have that is the exact same reason we had for the eutectic. In the eutectoid, uh, we have to diffuse carbon away from the alpha and into the cement and into the cementite, and that takes um, that that's that's accomplished via f the formation of this lamellar structure. So we form this right the okay. So that is the eutecto eutectoid microstructure okay and this also has a specific name this is called pro eutectoid uh, 
alpha because it existed before we we went through the transformation so uh let me see if i can get this out of here for you so pro-eutectoid alpha or pro-eutectoid ferrite is ferrite that forms before the eutectoid transformation an example of this microstructure that we've just drawn is shown in this micrograph here where you can see the the striated or lamella regions are the the um perlite or the eutectoid microstructure that forms and the the light colored regions are the pro eutectoid alpha okay so now let's move on to the the opposite end the hyper eutectoid solution so if the hypo eutectoid was a composition that was less than the eutectoid the hyper is a composition that's greater than the eutectoid so here's our eutectoid composition location 0.76 weight percent carbon anything that's to this side of that and still a steel is going to be a hyper eutectoid so remember we have to be also less than this point here uh right because if it was greater than point uh, sorry 2.14 weight percent carbon it'd be a cast iron it wouldn't be a steel anymore so we're just going to choose some uh arbitrary location sort of in the middle of that region and we're going to cool down and look at the microstructures so we're going to start here and we're going to cool all the way down and we're going to look at uh, in this slide at least we're going to look at the initial microstructure and then the microstructure just below that first phase transition we'll call that two uh, in the next slide, we'll look at what the microstructure looks like right above the eutectoid transformation temperature of 727. And then we'll look at one uh, right below that temperature. So uh, this is the easy one, though. Uh, we draw our microstructure. We're all austenite, so it's all gamma phase, um, just like it has been uh, the last two times we've looked at it. Okay, so that's easy. Then what happens is somewhat similar to the hypo the hypo eutectoid case we had alpha that began to form once we crossed the phase boundary in the hyper eutectoid case we're going to have uh cementite begin to form instead of alpha uh, so let's go ahead and draw what that looks like so here's my grains those are still um gamma grains except now we're going to have cementite a cementite phase forming at the grain boundaries again why is it forming at the grain boundaries it's forming at the grain boundaries because uh, cementite has a much higher carbon composition than the austenite phase does so we need to be able to diffuse carbon uh, away from the gamma phase to get to the cementite phase diffusion is going to occur fastest along the grain boundary so we're going to see those uh, begin there Okay, so this is the microstructure that we've got uh, right after that first phase transformation. Now let's look at what happens right, be, uh, right before we cross the eutectoid temperature, okay? All right, so now uh, again, we're, 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 remind you, we're, oops, let me switch pens here. We're cooling down. And now we want to look at what happens right there at point three and right there at point four. Okay. Well, similar to what we had in the alpha case in point for point three, rather. Remember, we had grains that look something like this. Uh, and then we had um, we had we had cementite forming at the grain boundaries. Well, now those that those amount those uh, uh, phases have grown and they now look something like this and then so in the surrounding whoops we have our gamma phase okay same argument what ha what is the composition of gamma right before it crosses the eutectoid temperature well it's the eutectoid composition so we know that that gamma is going to then form the eutectoid microstructure or that perlite that we saw before so so let's go ahead and uh we'll we'll draw that so at point four okay 
so here's our there's our cementite that existed. So that cementite existed before we did any sort of eutectoid transformation. And now the gamma that was there is going to form that eutectoid microstructure. So there's our lamella. Similar here. And then, you know, here. Okay, um, this um, the cementite that existed before the eutectoid transformation. Just like we had pro-eutectoid um, ferrite, we have pro-eutectoid cementite um, because it happened. Be it occurred before the eutectoid transformation. Pro u. Eutectoid cementite. Okay, and then this region here is just the eutectoid microstructure. Okay, so I want you to be familiar with that definition. Uh, Pro-eutectoid Fe3C or cementite is just the Fe3C that forms before the eutectoid transformation. And you can see that uh, in this micrograph here, um, where at the boundaries is the, um, the pro-eutectoid cementite, and then you see the, the microstructure uh, that is the eutectoid microstructure. So those are the three uh, types of microstructures that are going to exist in steels, at least in the equilibrium state. Uh, and then we'll talk more later about uh, non-equilibrium structure.